Well, have a nice nap. <laughs> fancy. How do you have a fancy nap? Also, hello. Also, I'm going to turn this music off. Also, I'm not wearing my headset. What am I doing with my life? Okay. Let's try this again. <laughs> Pinky up. All right. Well. Thank you. Have a nice nap, Comical. We're doing great. We're doing great. Everything's fine. Playing some more Phoenix Wright. Here's the music. It's very good music. Great. Let's begin. I also really love this game, Michi. Um, I do know what is the T. I know what's up for the first, like, few, like, pretty much the first full first game. I know what's up, so we'll probably move pretty quickly. I am gonna quit, like, right at 6. Because, well, I think Psyche's playing, uh, Yakuza today. If she is, then we're quitting right as soon as she starts <laughs> because I cannot miss it. I just got a trophy! <laughs> you do not have to attack anyone. No. Why did it have to be like this? I'll blame it on him. It goes something like that. You have an hour. Got it. No, it's in, in two hours. Two hours. I've got to find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. Yeah. I'll pin it on him. I'll make it look like he did it. I'm pretty sure she starts at 6 o'clock my time usually, Michi. Right? Right? If she starts in an hour, I'm going to kill myself. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, hi, Chief. Ooh, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. She starts at three for me. Hmm. Never played or seen a Phoenix Wright game? Well, Scout, you're about to, because we're about to play the shit out of it. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Michi. I will die if I miss. What the hell is that? You downloading shit over there? Yeah. Some game, like, finished downloading over here. <laughs> Great. Well, anyway. Uh, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? 
You mean you knew the defendant before this case? That's illegal. Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. It's so good. It's so good. You're going to love it. Well, that seems to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death, despair. Oh, it's the butt. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna do it. It sounds like he wants to die. Uh, yeah. Nick. Hey there, buddy. Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. Same. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I'm finished. I'm too tired for intense. It's a fun kind of intense. It's so good. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Uh, the person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. But... My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. She was whacked. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. <laughs> in the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck and terrible judgment. But I know better than anyone that he has a good guy heart. He's a good guy at heart. He doesn't have a guy's heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. Are you telling me that you're butts, Scout? And that's just what I'm going to do. My favorite is the uh, like tutorial prosecutor in this. I love his hair. Also, gotta say, this game looks great. My life is butts. Oh no. If it stinks, it's usually the scout. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, uh, defense is ready, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Uh, yeah, yeah it is. Uh, I'm nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Because if you lose, you both get the death penalty. Well, it's a HD update. So it looks, I mean, it looks pretty much how I remember it. Just maybe a little bit crisper. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. What? <laughs> you show up to court and you're like being defended by some guy and the judge is like, all right, now it's time for the multiple choice test. <laughs> Hands shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely or perish. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. It's Larry Butts. Defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Woo, I know this one. Glad I read the, rec the case report cover so many times. It's... I'll probably be popping in and out. No problem. Yeah, living. How dare you not just sit and watch this without doing anything else. Uh-oh, I forgot. <laughs> I'm drawing a total blank. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? I mean, I'd be pretty upset too. You don't even know the victim's name? The victim, of course I do. I know the victim's name. I just forgot, temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the R1 button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? It's Cindy Stone. 
the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the Thinker. Thinker? More like Stinker, am I right? Right? It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepted it into evidence. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the R1 button to check the court record frequently. Okay, I got it. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Get that butt up there. Um, Chief, what do I do now? What? <laughs> he just doesn't know how to do his job at all. Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate or incriminating. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Booty, 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 rocking everywhere. It's the butts. He does, he really does look a little sketchy, though. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? That's, that's not good. Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, and Mark Anthony. Uh, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me ever. What's it to you, anyway? Hey, Scout. Scout saw a booby for the first time yesterday. <laughs> Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by don't. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies, all of it lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Yeah, she dead, though. She real dead. Titty girl, rest in peace. We saw your titty, and then we saw you dead. Hmm. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. <laughs> daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts, including me. I also gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude, we can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Okay, first of all, don't fucking slut shame, all right? This is 2020. She can do whatever she wants. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I, uh, stop him from answering? My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. <laughs> Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheat and cheat off. Fucking <laughs> goddammit. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. I'm gonna get to that bottom. Carne asada fries? Why does everybody have carne asada fries except me? Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Rude. Yes, quite. Great. This is not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder. Did you not? Uh, well, did you or did you not? Huh. <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. 
Uh-oh, he went. What do I do? Have a mind, sir, honestly. Oh, the booty puns. Come to Cali. Uh, no thank you. I'd like to be in a place that's not on fire. I know. I'll send him a signal. I love this. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Well, Mr. Butts? We got smoke, avocados, and great food, but mostly smoke. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. Attention! Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. <laughs> you, got a, you got a gender that needs revealing? We got you. I saw this thing, it was like the scene in Mulan where they like start lighting, they like light the the flames on the wall and they're like, now all of California knows it's a boy. <laughs> so fuck. One time offer. I'm there. I'm going. I'm on my way. Well, that simplifies matters. Who's your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. First fire come, first serve? Oh my god. <laughs> he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. I hope you're happy about your gender reveal because it'll cost ya. Uh, yeah. Literally, it should. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Like, how tone deaf do you have to be to be in a state where, like, literally all the time, like, fire is, like, a no-no? And you're like, oh yeah, let's just fucking... Light a big ass fire for no reason. <laughs> Didn't even mean to make that mistake. No, that that shit was funny. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. It costs everyone. We. It's our fire. Our baby. <laughs> Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. I had to come up with a good voice for this guy. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, <gasps> dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without doubt the defendant sitting right over there. The judge is like, sounds good to me. Guilty. End of case. <laughs> Credits roll. <laughs> hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? Why didn't you tell us that you murdered everyone? Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout record added to the court record. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yeah, what's up? <laughs> you may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? What's that? All right, this is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client's in innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? <gasps> How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Then punch him. Uh, okay. 
open the court record with the R1 button, then point out the contradictions in the testimony. No, but the family has to pay millions for starting the fire. Good. And give us the baby. I was going door to door. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I know exactly what's the problem here. Oh, yeah? It was 1 p.m.? That's impossible! Objection! When you played it on the DS, you could, like, actually, like, yell. And go, OBJECTION! Which is not very, uh... <laughs> it's kind of frowned upon by parents if you're in the car and suddenly uh, you're playing your little DS game and you yell, OBJECTION! At the, like, top of your lungs as a child. Dio is sleeping in Toby's bed. Toby. Sorry, buddy. <gasps> yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There's nobody to, er, no, body to find at 1 p.m. Ha 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 ha. How do you explain this three-hour gap, slut? <gasps> oh, uh, that, uh, er... This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. Uh, nah, bitch, he was pretty sure. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video or of a tape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. You thought that it was 1 p.m. Because the TV said it was, huh? Huh. That's awful convenient, isn't it? Right. You know what to do. I got this one. Fucking dumbass. We just said there was a blackout, idiot. Yeah. Stupid. Good one. Done, done. But. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. We literally just said that. This record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Ah, I, well, uh, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Mm. Ah! Wait, I remember now, Mr. Sawit. The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. And I'm about to harm you. That, and you seem rather distraught. Uh, my apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Fucking... Mm-hmm. 
doesn't really look like a clock, does it? Objection! Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. I would have loved to seen to have seen somebody like play this for the first time because I feel like everybody's already played this. Like the confusion of like what what fucking clock? What? Now how is this supposed to be a clock? You with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? A lawyer? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. That's a clock. I think Psyche has never played it. Ooh. Your honor, if I may. Get Psyche in on this. I'll do some voices. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. You fucking fickle ass bitch. I see. So the murder weapon was a tablecloth after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yes. We did it a little on my birthday, but maybe we can get something going for the three of us. Holy shit. Yeah, I saw... Was Psyche with you for that? I saw that you played it a bit, but you were only playing, like, the... It was, like, the last chapter of the first game. It was weird. Your Honor, there's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. I was trying to get to an exciting part. Well... I mean, it was fine. It was good. I liked all the voices. I probably have said you should have done the uh, third case instead. The samurai one. I think that one would have been more fun. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... Went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. <gasps> oh, yeah. Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. <laughs> you struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. Well, that was the sound you heard. Everyone's like, holy shit. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. He's such an enabler. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Solid, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? Are you a murderer? I, that day, I, I never, uh, look, I, the clock, I, no, I saw, uh, uh, uh. oh. Shut up, shut up, I hate you. It was him, I tell you, I saw him. He killed her, and he should burn, burn, give him death. Oh my god. Everyone's like, oh my god, fuck it, okay. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is writing on this. I better think of it through carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Ask the neighbors. Hey, do you hear a murder? If you happen to hear a murder, could you tell me, like, what time the clock said? Sound the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me the time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah. 
As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha, ha, ha. We forgot one thing. Ugh. I'm so confident. While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. <gasps> yes, your honor. Credits roll. The end. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately... This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal. You lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do now. The end. Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. Mia, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this, think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Uh, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes. Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow. Have you found evidence? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha, tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see the evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. It's because she was in Paris. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Saw it, or should I say, Mr. Did it? Ooh, got him. Yeah. Oh shit. This is rabid. Order, I say. Whoop. Whoop. Well. This case has certainly turned out differently, differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness, he, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find a true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. <laughs> and with that, this court is adjourned. It turns out that Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Mortared her. Ooh, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Uh, thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. Man, I sure hope nothing happens to Mia. She's such a great partner and friend. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. 
<laughs> My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no. I mean, bad. Not good. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But my Cindy Winnie's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she... <sighs> Never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yeah, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. Ha. Uh, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? Wow, he moved on fast. Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And... And she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you just want to cry? Larry. Are you so sure? Squeeze me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Uh, yeah, alright. What the heck is she talking about? What's this? Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry, and she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on who, how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Dang, is my boss hitting on me? So, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us, unless you count the clock he gave me up. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident, and my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Well, it was a pretty short game, but <laughs> what if that was just the end? What if that was the whole game? A brand new episode has been added. Yeah, let's save. I love that you get a trophy in this for just starting up the game. Bring. Hello, this is Maya. Hey, Maya, it's me. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How have you been? Well, lonely, and it's all your fault. Now, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you. Sharp as always, there's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So, what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock? Yeah, it's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. I thought that you might like it. You always like toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. 
No, no, you know I'm only teasing. I, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working. That's lame. I had to take the clock word out. Clock work out, sorry. I put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? Hmm. Well, there's a possibility that it might turn out that way, yes. Can you come by the office tonight, say 9 o'clock, to pick it up? I'll be in a pre-trial meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner or something good, like burgers. Yeah. I could really go for a good burger. Okay, okay. We'll hit the usual joint. Alright, it's a deal. Okay, sis, see you soon. Yep, I'll be waiting, Maya. Conversation recorded September 5th. Oh! About there. September 5th. Now, Miss Faye, I'll take what's mine. The papers. I I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Faye, you are a poor liar. Why, I see it right over there. That must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. How could you know? Ho ho, you are not cogniferous of my background. Gathering information is my business, you see. I, I should have been more careful. Ho ho, my dear Miss Faye, I am so very sorry, but I am afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Faye. <gasps> Aya! Red, white, blue. September 5th. Uh oh, I'm late. Huh, that's strange. Guess the chief left without me. She said her sister was coming over so we should all go out to dinner. What's that smell? Blood? Mia! Maybe she's in her office. Can't look at anything. That smell. Blood. Sob. Sis. Someone's there. <gasps> Chief? Chief! Chief! Who are you? Oh, alright. Now we got two bodies. The strange girl dropped out cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then all too quickly it began to fade, until finally she was cold. Chief. Chief. It's hard seeing her like this, but if there are any clues here, she was struck on the head with a blunt object. F. She probably died instantly. This made me so sad. I know! It's like, yeah! She's so cool, I can't wait to see more of her. She's dead. The thinker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. There's some glass sh shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of the glass light stand lying broken in the back of the room. Nothing else that seems like a clue here. Hmm? A piece of paper must have fallen from Mia's hand. What could it be? A word is written in blood on this scrap of paper. Maya, did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store dated yesterday. Ah. Okay. I think that's enough snooping around for now. I better call the police and find out what that girl was doing here. better call the police. That's funny. A few of the screws on the receiver are missing. Looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Police? Please come quick. What was that? She's going live soon? Fuck! 
I guess I'll just have to watch it on the VOD. Thanks, Michi. I probably shouldn't just stream for an hour. She's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. It's your call. <laughs> Don't tell me that. Well, it's not like there are hundreds of people here that I'm going to be disappointing. That girl just now, where'd she go? I put her right there on that sofa. Uh-oh, I hope she didn't run on run on me. Yipes, don't scare me like that. Um, excuse me, but who are you? It's okay, I work here. Maya Faye. That's true, I guess we did do the first trial. Maya. So Mia was writing this girl's name. Maybe I should show her the receipt. Go until jail. Yeah, that, that'll be fine. Never thought there'd be a use for evidence like this outside the courtroom. She seems to be in shock. I don't want to disturb her, but I have to know. Uh, excuse me, can you tell me what happened? I came in, the room is dark, and sis, she was already dead. So, you're the chief's sister. I'm her sister. And you were here visiting this late at night? Yes. She said she wanted me to keep some evidence for her. Evidence? Yeah, it, it was in that clock. It was a thinker. Before Mia died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. That's my name. Why? Why would she write my name? Please just calm down. Why would she write my name? Uh oh, now I've done it. Wee woo, wee woo. <laughs> Thanks for the hydrate. The police! Sounds like they're coming this way. Now my favorite character is about to show up. Freeze, police! There he is! Mr. Thick himself. It's still weird seeing this game in actual art form instead of sprite form. Yeah, isn't it crazy? They're so big. High clubs. All right, I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, see? Gumshoe, what an odd name. We received a report from the building across the way, see? Got a person saying they saw a murder. Go until jail and we can try to talk to Psyche about the three of us doing this. Yes, Gumshoe's my favorite. Also, I'm still gonna play this anyway on my channel, but I think it'd be fun if Psyche wanted to play it. I played it for the first time on the DS. It took me a minute to get used to the art style. Yeah, I played it on the DS uh, up until now. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving one inch, okay? Great, just great. Maya, wait, she wouldn't have... Whoa, excuse me. There's a body in there. Eek. This word Maya here mean anything to you? Uh, that's, that's my name. What? The victim drew this here note in her bone blood, see? With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. Killer? I'm not. Case closed. You're coming down to the precinct, ma'am. You can play it and she goes through the story with you? Oh. You think she'd do it? I mean, I'd be down for that. Mia's younger sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around, waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. Wow, they have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Okay. Well, well, maybe we can have Psyche come in and hang out and play this with us. I think that could be fun. Uh, let's call it here because I'd like to go watch Psyche stream. Um, let me see.
But yeah, uh, we'll kind of look into it and see what's going on. Uh, Michi, Scout, Rainbow, Comical Doom, thanks for uh, popping by for a little bit. Uh, I know it was short, but I, I swear that Psyche usually starts at like 6 by time, but I guess she's starting at 5. Woo! So let's end it here. Uh, I'm going to play this again next week. Maybe we can get uh, some gals on here to help me with uh, some of the voices. I'll see y'all soon. I'm going to head over to Psyche Stream. And I'll see you next time. Thank you, Michi, for keeping an eye on that, by the way. I appreciate you. Bye.